let's talk knife skills, chopping, dicing, mincing, you name it. So number one thing you need is a good knife. For me, the only knife that I really even use on a regular basis is my chef knife. So having a sharp chef knife is very important. A lot of people think that a sharp knife is more dangerous than a dull knife, but that's actually very false because when you're chopping something or cutting something, if it's dull, you're gonna be applying more pressure. And when you're applying more pressure, that's when accidents happen, when you can slip and cut your finger off. Um, so make sure your knife is sharp. Find a knife that fits you good. For me, this is an eight, eight inch chef knife. Um, that is my favorite knife and I use this knife more than any knife. So another thing I wanna talk about really quick is holding your knife. I used to cut vegetables like this with my finger on top. I thought that's how you were supposed to chop vegetables. That is wrong. You do not want to go like this. Um, you just don't wanna do that. Hold it. What you wanna do is you want to hold the knife blade right here in between your finger and your thumb. So you are actually not even holding the handle, you're holding up here. And then from there, you have your hands, both of them like this, your finger and your, your point, pointer finger and your thumb. And then you wrap these three bottom fingers around the handle. What, and then from there, you're gonna use a wrist motion to chop. You're not gonna be going like this or going like this. I used to go like this all the time and in culinary school my instructor was always yelling at me. It was such a habit for me that even though he told me I should, how to hold a knife, it took me a very long time to get in, to get out of that bad habit of holding my knife like this and holding it the proper way. This gives you a better grip, it gives you much more leverage and it's just, you can cut things a lot faster. I had no idea how much faster I can chop vegetables and owning a meal prep company, I need to chop vegetables really fast. So hold it like this, then those bottom three around the handle and it's a like a wrist motion more than anything. Another thing, um, I use these little like drawer liners to put underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slip around and slide around. You can use a wet towel, um, anything just to keep it a wet towel or one of these, or even I've used um, a thin like pot holder before. So put that underneath your cutting board to keep it from slipping. You want to have a very sturdy, solid cutting board. Um, also, um, what you want to do when you're when you're chopping vegetables, you want to have your other hand, so you have your hand that's holding the knife, and then the other hand is your guide hand. You don't ever wanna hold vegetables with your fingers out like this, because that's how you cut your finger. You always wanna do the claw, and the claw is just a claw. I mean, that's what it is. And then from there, your knuckles will be bent, and that is what you use as your guide when you're chopping your vegetables. You will just go right along and as you move this hand back, the knife goes with it and you can get really fast. Um, so this is just slicing some rounds and see how I'm going like this and just following that guide hand right along. This is gonna prevent me from, if my finger were out here and I were going fast, you're gonna cut the tip of your finger off. Nobody wants a fingernail in their food. They just don't. <laughs> so make sure you're using the claw hand. Another way, for me, I like going like this, this is the proper way, but certain times I'll actually, instead of using my knuckles, another way that I have found it really works for me and I can really chop vegetables fast is when I'm going like this and I'm using my thumb knuckle as my guide and still doing that claw, but instead I'm going, I'm using my knuckle as my guide. I can get really thin slices this way and for me it just, it helps me really get more accurate thin slices. And they say um, a chef is judged based on, their knife skills are judged based on the symmetry. If all of the shapes and slices are very similar, that is a good sign. That's what you want. And that is just the goal of most chefs. 
So anyways, I sliced up some of these rounds. This is slicing for those of you who don't know. I'm gonna go over a couple other techniques. Um, also matchsticks. So matchsticks would be, basically you would slice it and you always wanna form a flat surface. So I'm just gonna cut this in half like so. And then from there, I'm gonna put my palm on here and cut it like that. I'm gonna do the same thing. And then what a julienne or a, what a julienne is, is a matchstick. So you can make them, there's a variety of different sizes, um, but for the most part, it's just a very, a matchstick type cut. So what you would do is you would just form these little matchsticks. This is kind of a larger one, but you can make them as, um, you know, varying sizes. So you've got these little matchsticks. I'm gonna cut this in half again, like that, to make them more of an actual true matchsticks. A, ma a true matchstick, a true, true julienne is when it is like that. This would be a julienne cut. So then to do a dice, you basically would just first julienne it and then you turn it and you dice it so that however wide it is, you can do a fine dice, a large dice, you want it to be like a symmetrical square for a dice. So I'm trying to make these all the same size length as they are width. And then you have your dice. So also, let's see here, you can just do some rough chopping of vegetables. And then a mince, so a mince would just basically be You'd have your dice and then you would just, I put my palm of my hand on the top and you're gonna just make this really fine. You're gonna mince it up, go over back and forth, scoop it all together and continue to do that until it is very, as fine as you want it. You can do a really fine mince um, or a semi-fine mince, but you just keep going like this basically and do that until it is as fine as you want. Oh, a chiffon chiffonade. So I'm gonna get, grab some cabbage here. So this is just, you know, you're slicing your vegetable. This is just a slice, okay? I'm actually gonna use this later. So you're gonna slice that up. Um, I'm gonna take a leaf of the cabbage though and show you, I don't have any, typically a chiffonade is like when you're using um, basil or fresh herbs. I don't have any of that right now. So I'm gonna use this just to show you. Let's pretend that this is a basil leaf or a couple basil leaves. You would just, take them and stack them one upon another. And then you would roll it up like this, as tight as you can. And then you would just go like this. And you wanna make sure you're doing a rocking motion. Do you see how my knife is rocking? You don't want to be pressing down, especially with basil, because it's going to bruise the basil and make it turn black and make it ugly. You want this to be a very rocking, smooth motion. You do not want to be, you know, just pressing. And then this right here is your chiffonade or your shredding. So pretty. I love cabbage. So that's basically it. You've got, you know, your dice, your julienne cut your dice, your slice, your rounds. Um, those are pretty much the basic cuts that you'll need to know for meal prep. Just cut up an onion really quick because it's fun to do. In culinary school, I actually <laughs> was the one who, I love chopping onions. I don't know why, I was the weirdo. Anytime there were onions to be chopped, all of my classmates would hand me the onions because I enjoyed doing it and it was one of my favorite things to do. So here is a proper way to dice an onion. You're gonna cut off the ends. And I always keep a little garbage bucket by me instead of like standing over the garbage or holding this over the garbage because if I drop something in this, this is a clean bowl. I can pick it out and I can still use that food. If I drop something in my garbage, I don't know what's in there. I'm not gonna eat it. So it's wasted. 
Um, this is this onion has definitely seen better days, but I just wanted to use it up just to kind of show you guys. So obviously you peel it, you get it cleaned. And I like to peel out the core. You can cut it out with a paring knife. Personally, this is how I do it. I usually just peel out that core. A lot of times it's easier to just peel it than um, cutting it out. And obviously if you, this is my food for my home, if you are cutting any food or any fresh vegetables that are not gonna be cooked, you have to wear gloves. And I always do wear gloves. I'm, it's actually weird for me cutting vegetables without gloves on because I've just become so used to it. But anyways, so now I've got the core peeled out. I've got it cleaned. So um, also if I were in my meal prep kitchen, I would not touch my hair and then touch the food. You have to wash your hands after you touch anything non-food. But I'm at home and this onion is actually just gonna be going in my crock pot in tonight's dinner. So anyways, all right. So here is cutting up an onion. Let me move that so you can see a little bit better. So once you get it clean and cut in half, you put your palm on the top and then you're gonna slice like this and like this. Do the same thing for the other one, like this. This. and then you're gonna take your claw hand again you're not gonna go all the way back you're gonna go just to right before and then you do the same thing for this one not gonna go all the way back just right before Then you turn it and you go like this, get your claw hand and your guide and you dice, dice, dice. And you try not to cry. Then once I get to the end, you've got this chunk of onion and you don't wanna waste that cause that's throwing money away. So instead of just throwing it away or getting to the end and not knowing what to do, I flip it over like this. And then I just go down like this and then I turn it around. So it's all even the same as the rest of those. And then repeat for the second onion. My eyes are watering. Flip it over, go like this. Flip it again. And there you go. All right, guys. So that is it for knife skills. If